Steven and Larry and we're talking Swish. Welcome everyone to another edition of Talking Swish. Larry here alongside with me is my podcast brother Steven Dykeman. Steven, how are we doing today? Good man. We've got a lot of a lot of stuff to talk about on the show today. It's been an exciting day. We've you you've been playing the the opens, the Caldheim qualifiers for uh, SCG. Yep, the SCG little PTQ qualifier, I guess. Yep. Everybody's calling it the PTQ. Is that so what they, okay. It's essentially a PTQ. It is, right? yeah. So yeah. You, you've been doing those this week. It's like an RPTQ. Been... Look at it like that because you have to kind of, qualify through like much. little satellites, which PPTQs yep. were. And then you play in a big tournament where. Unfor- uh, unlike um, RPTQs, where you have to get first place in this one, yep. but there's a lot of secondary um, prize amounts and stuff, of course. Yep. So you've been doing that, and then we've we've got some sealed action going on. We just finished yours up. We're probably going to do mine later. Um, and yeah, and then we've got some some big news to talk about in regards to bannings today. There's yeah, been we, a lot of stuff going on there. We um, briefly touched it last week when the announcement came that Euro was getting the axe, but. We did not anticipate what was going to be following the Euro announcement. Well, or except Larry, because he called it in yeah. Legacy, and for we'll, those who listened. Yep, and we'll be getting into it. And we'll be getting into that in just a moment. Um, but, but in the meantime, we are going to be um, talking about a lot of things. I would definitely advise everyone to play in the Arena Open if you haven't. Um, you probably won't know about the Arena Open because this comes out on Monday. But if you did play in the Arena Open, I should say, I hope you did well. Maybe you got that cash prize. Maybe you won yourself some gems. Hopefully, it didn't take that many flights to get to the day two. Yeah. Um, I won't be doing any more for myself because I got a tournament tomorrow. I really don't want to double queue. I was only going to double queue if I did it off of the first flight. Yep. But since I did not, I'm going to just sit back, read Twitter, and enjoy watching everybody I know that get that successful two thousand or one thousand dollars in their pocket i always like seeing my friends and colleagues lying in their pockets playing some magic the gathering yep but overall um the last week has been pretty interesting um last week for example in the star city event aggro stepped up and said we ain't gonna take soul ties bs yep um what do you think about that the mono white's a good deck it's it's great um you know, if, if uh, the next one I play in, I, I might end up playing Mono White. Who knows? Um, that's but, quite good. Yeah, no, it, it looks really good. Every every time uh, I play against it or see it play against somebody, it, it looks like a strong deck for yeah. sure. So um, I've had some good success. I'm like X1 against it right now in my tournaments. I've done three of these events, and I've lost the Mono White exactly one time. Yep. And I've beat it, I think, three or four times. Okay, yeah. Um, but I have a little different build than most yeah, people Yeah, you built your deck to be much more prepared for aggro than most yep. soul type players. Which a lot of people are ignoring aggro for some reason. It is astonishing to me that people are like, aggro dominated last week because people they get took really, advantage. People get really obsessed with winning the mirror, man. I never understand. <laughs> I was like, if you're a good player, you could steal game ones. Which, yeah. you watched me earlier, I stole a game one against blue-white. Yep. Which I should never win that matchup to save my life. Yeah, blue white control um, with just when you're playing mono like counter spells, twelve removal spells in your main deck. And, exactly. Yeah, and because yeah, I'm playing seven um si- se- no nine singular removal spells and then five board wipes. Yeah, five board wipes and seven, seven two mana removal spells. Well, no, it's seven including the blood sheepsters. Oh, I forgot about those. Yeah, that's yeah. why. I, no, there was seven and then the two blood Jeez, sheepsters is nine. Yeah, that's. Whew. But the Blood Sheepsters, ironically, is pretty good against Blue White if yeah, they're playing can do Walkers. Something and, at least, yeah. Um, but the rest of the removal, um, I guess, some Shark Typhoon tokens is something yeah. to respect. Yeah. But other than that, it's not where you want to be in life. Not at all. Um, but thankfully, I was I was stealing game ones. I did it against Soul Tie. I two old Soul Tie earlier because game one I have to steal. I got to steal and I got to play well. He actually ultimated me and I still won that matchup. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. And then game two, I. I have a great package in the sideboard specifically for because I don't have to put my, many aggro cards in the sideboard right. because I put all my focus on aggro game yeah. one. Um, and I think that was the correct call. A lot of people don't like to adapt to metas because there's a lot of cockiness in Magic. Cockiness where people don't want to respect aggro. They're like, it's not, they're not real decks. They, they were a fly on the wall for one week. They won't be back. And then they get crushed the second week. And they're like, <laughs> what is going on? We need to ban something. We need to ban Ember Cleave. <laughs> 
Oh like, man. Well, they're because their broken deck don't have time to set up for a combo. It's, yeah. It's quite funny. Um, people will learn that if you don't respect the aggro, there's a reason why Burn was dominating and taking down Hogax during Hogax Summer. Because people thought, I'm going to play Hogax, but Burn's going to just come underneath me and burn me to death. Mm -hmm. um, similar situation that happens in every format. And that's why the Mago decks just come out of nowhere and be like, I'm just going to have a good weekend. Yeah. It's hence why Boggles will do like good because those kind of decks don't get the respect. Yep. And that's the nature of the beast. People, unfortunately, are still going to do what they do. And for those that want to take advantage of it, do it. Yep. Um, if you don't want to adapt your deck to the current meta, you're probably not going to have a good time, and you're probably going to get a lot of frustrated feelings. We've seen it earlier um, a little bit. People people that we know um, are, are convinced their build is like great, and then they ended up losing to the decks that they so-called said were great against. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, but regardless... Um, we're not going to spend all day talking about standard. We'll, we'll be touching other formats because we have a long ban list to go through. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, just to cover last week, um, briefly, we talked about Euros getting the axe. Or Euros going to be gone in almost every format except Legacy and Vintage. Yep, we knew that was coming. Um, because that was announced in the Secret Lair. Yeah. We also had good speculation they're going to be changing a rule because of the Turbo Valky, which is people are considering the most busted modern deck in history. Okay. I'm um, glad I didn't play. Turn one and two Vol uh, to Volts probably is a um, good qualification of being considered yeah, a bus bus. That might even be better than Olgak, turns out. Yeah, no, 100%. It's quicker. <laughs> yeah, it's quicker. quicker. <laughs> and it was so consistent. <laughs> yeah. It made Eldrazi look like a little fairy tale. Like a joke. Yeah. Like, huh, look at that little puppy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they did change the rule, which we're going to go ahead and start by talking about how the Cascade rule was changed. Yep. And then we're going to be going through, usually I just read the whole ban announcement verbatim. We're actually going to be taking baby steps to get to the ban list this time. Okay. Because we're going to talk about it, talk about the formats it's impacting, and go from there. So the rules change is, for the older formats, they are on changing the rule for Cascade. Okay, so how it's worded is, Cascade is a triggered ability that functions only while a spell with Cascade is on the stack. Cascade means when you cast a spell, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land card whose converted mana cost is less than the spell's converted mana cost. You may cast that spell while paying its mana cost if its converted mana cost is less than the spell's converted mana cost. It's a so, very clean change. So that means if you hit Valky, you can only cast Valky because Valky's the two drop. Yeah. You have to cast a spell that has the converted mana cost. Yeah. They... They seen the issue. They were like, we're going to just update the ruling yep. for Cascade. That's good. And, and really, and that's how it should work. That's literally what Cascade was basically meant. Yeah, it's literally what it su was supposed to mean. So I, I don't remember what it said before, what no, the ruling said pretty before, much, that's um, exactly because, what you want. Because it's so awkward because split cards up wasn't really the th yeah. thing at that time. And so that made things very complicated. And... The thing about the older mechanics, eventually something new is going to come. Because I don't think they should, i mentioned this many times, they shouldn't put any, hardly any focus on the eternal formats. You can ban and change rules to fix mechanics such as this. You might yeah. have a week where it sucks. Just bear with them. Yeah. Bear with them. They don't know this. They need to work on standard and limited. And then maybe a little historic they can touch, but I prefer them not even to touch historic. Yeah. Focus on standard and limited, because if those two formats are good, you can make the other ones follow. Yeah. Um, Jeff Hogan made a good point. He's like, the one good thing that's a magic is like every format is like a different game. It's used, which has been weird for the last year is that every format has been so busted because of the power creep. Yeah. Um, with it being Euro, being Oak, or being, you know, well, the Eldraine tribal decks. Anything from Eldraine has been busted. So they've, they've had some issues, but I think they finally are addressing them in the correct fashion. Now, with that being said, let's go through. We're going to start with Historic. It's the one we knew his uh, Euro was getting banned in. So the Historic ban was, well, first, Omnath, Lowest of Creation, is officially not suspended. It's officially banned. Yep. They gave it the time trial. They thought about it. It doesn't need to be legal. Makes Understandable. Sense. Sense. Yep, makes sense. Right. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. And then the other banning is Euro Titan of Nature's Wrath. <clears throat> yep, which we knew was coming. 
we talked about it last <clears throat> week. Tell us what your opinion on the on historic is. What what's the biggest impact from the Euro ban in your opinion? Uh, I mean, I, I think it's just gonna it's you know we talked a little bit about this last week. It's it's gonna let some other decks kind of come out and play a little more. I think blue white control might be an option now, although it, that deck might still struggle with all these Coco decks. We talked about how Collective Company is you know a great great card and probably probably now the best card. In this format, although uh, Muxus is up there too, um, is very strong. I think Company's actually tied with Thoughtseize. I think if okay, you, yep. I think I've, I'm honestly saying this. I've heard it from people, and I agree. If you're not playing a Thoughtseize or Collected Company deck, you're giving yourself a disservice. Mm -hmm. um, Muxus can be the exception. I think yeah. th those might be the three cards that you need to be playing. Yeah, those are probably the three best cards. Yeah, you need to be yeah. playing one of those. I don't care what. What's going along with Thoughtseize? Yeah. You could be Ultimatum, which is a deck now in, Sol uh, in a Sultai Ultimatum in Historic, yep. which is a fine deck. Um, fine, you know, if that's what you want to play, go for it. I think the hate is um, more intense in Historic than it is Standard, so it's going to be more reasonable. Yeah. And plus, there's a lot of aggress aggressive decks now with Euro being pushed out of the format yeah. where you could take advantage of a deck like that. Yeah. Um, also, I do think that the company decks have so much room to um, be developed because yeah. like i said jeff Owen did that angels one i was talking to you about which was pretty cool i've been messing around with zombies again zombie company um you could just do like a band value there's so many i think thought about doing like a golgari one because you got that three drop that's from galdheim the one that's like blast on on a stick yeah you company into that that's kind of cool glass pool mimics a hit because it's a land as well which is really yeah. really helps because that now usually you had to count four lands towards like okay what's your percentage of hitting but you get to play glass pool mimic and that is a copy of any creature so if you get glass pool mimic in any creature i don't i don't know because if they come at the same time because when i did on the arena the original time i had both glass pool mimic died oh so it was weird. I don't know how that ruling works. Yeah, I think you have to mimic a thing that's already in play. Yeah, yeah, because that so, happened when we were playing Ultimatum, Team yeah. Ultimatum too, and Standard. Yeah. Now that I think about so, it, so that is something to keep in mind. I just remembered that as we're speaking of it. Yeah. Um, I've been doing quite well with Mono Black Aggro. Um, yep. I've done a couple different builds. I've seen a lot of Gruel Company. Obviously, that's good because you go Company at the end of the turn, hit two Gruel Sprawl Breakers. That's eight damn. Yeah, eight whatever. Power. You just hit so many good cards. You hit like double love struck beast. Just all sorts of yeah. There's nonsense. so many just insane cards in there. Yeah, yeah, collected company. I mean, that, that that's really the the um the main thing of Euro being gone is be ready to see a lot more collected company because you're yeah. going to. Oh, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Hell, um, before this, I I remember doing a little Cynic company with Euros. Yeah. Oh, that was fun. That was a good time. Yeah. But Euro is gone, thankfully. And it's going to open the door. Now people don't have to play the bad Soul Tide deck. They can, Because <laughs> Ultimatum might have been the better deck along the way. Um, Could have been, yeah. And I think, um, honestly, people have been forced to play the Euro Soul Tide deck, even though the results were so bad for so long. Mm -hmm. So, definitely looking forward to that. Now, since we spoke about a lot of Historic last week because we knew it was getting banned, yep. let's talk about Pioneer. Yep. This is one of the ones that caught us all off guard. Yeah. So, we're going to go through this ban list. So, what is that pronounced? Balustrade Spy? Yeah, Balustrade. The, yeah, the, basically the, the, the Millier deck. Yep, it's spy. the Utah Spells deck. Yep. Tefiri Time Raveler is banned. Undercity Informer, another card that was in some of the Utah Spells deck. Euro Tie in the Nature's Wrath, as expected. And then they banned Wilderness Reclamation. Yeah, thank God. Um, I heard it was pretty bad, busted in um Yeah, no, I was yeah, I was uh, perusing Twitter and saw that some people were like, Hey, it's just standard and historic. <laughs> Here we are again. Like it's just the same deck. Agreed. It's agreed. like actually the same deck. Almost exactly the same, not a card different. Roll yep. spiral, Euro, Reclamation, all the same crap. Just not interesting at all or exciting. Thank you just get it out of here. Get that deck out of here. We've had enough I don't want to see that deck ever again. That, I'm so sick of that deck. So I, I'm, I'm glad they, they got rid of Reclamation. The card was stupid. Uh, Time Reveler going. We've talked we talked about this so many times on our podcasts from the past. That card is just dumb. The static is stupid. It doesn't belong in Magic. Getting that out of Pioneer is fine as well. We just don't need that stuff. Um, obviously, the Oops All Spells stuff. Um, I, I, hadn't, I have not played Pioneer in a very long time. I don't know what that deck looked like, but 
I oh, assume it was, it was nasty. oppressive. Yeah, yeah was I assume nasty. it was oppressive. And, you know, you can have that kind of oppressive stuff in Legacy when you have uh, fail safes like Force of Will and, and Days and stuff like that. But in, in formats where we don't have counter spells that are that awesome, just again, just we don't need it. That's not good magic at all. It's terrible. Um, that's my opinion, obviously. Maybe I'm, some people disagree. But I, I, when I play magic, I want to play magic. I'm not trying to sit at the table for three turns. I agree. I agree. <clears throat> Um, the one thing I do think I like the theory being banned because it opens up a big door for control decks to be more viable. Yeah. Um, I also think with Euro Gone that as it's we've seen in this past week, I've been paying attention that aggro is very heavy, very you know mono black um, vampires has been doing quite good, which that's awesome to see. I know another teammate of ours would love to he will be loving to hear that um, since he talks about vampires at least once a month. It feels like. Just some all the red decks are unlocked because I don't think the red decks are particularly good because of Euro. Yeah. It's most notably the Soul Tide deck. Yeah. The Soul Tide deck was real in um in Pioneer. I talk about it in historic a lot, but in Pioneer it was the truth. Yeah. They they just have more tools at their disposal, of course. Yeah. And like you mentioned, I mentioned Will this Reclamation. We de we've had to deal with that. We've, we've talked about multiple of these cards so many times because they were a problem at so many times in multiple formats and they they just they really they don't belong in magic they really don't i mean they were they were mistakes uh we've mentioned that they were mistakes before and um just getting them out of all the formats is fine and we don't need them mm -hmm. um and in formats where they're not causing a problem uh, they're fine for now, and if someday they became a problem in other formats, we can get rid of them there, too. Yep. And, you know, that's kind of what you were saying earlier. Like, when things become issues, just just end it. I mean, it's there's nothing wrong with Wizards doing that. Yep. As long as they're quick to the quick to the trigger and don't let things linger on and, and become super boring and not good for the players, um, that's, that's key. 100% agree with you. Um, now, when it comes to the Pioneer banning, is there any cards that you would have liked to see banned that wasn't banned, or is there anything that is already on the ban like list I said, that you'd like I to see? Really, on the I haven't touched Pioneer in over a year. I don't think. Yeah. I don't think I have played Pioneer since the Lotus Box Pioneer event at the very near the beginning of quarantine. Um, I don't know if that's true because I don't know if we that was on before or after we tried to play our Flash deck. <laughs> You're right. That might have been that might have been the last Pioneer deck we That's played. Man, talk about you're a salty right. taste in your you're, mouth. You're right. That <laughs> that pile of garbage was the, was the last pine. And if if the person who asked us to play that deck is listening, sorry. It, it was it was a cool idea. I meant to, but oh my god, the way we built it was bad. Um, but anyway, uh, you know, I, I haven't touched Pioneer in a really long time, so I I couldn't really say if anything else should be on that list. Um, I have no idea what that format looks like. Um, like I said, I didn't even know the Oops deck was a thing in Pioneer. Oh, yeah. I haven't even paid any attention to Pioneer That's other than fair. a few Twitter posts or whatever. Understandable, understandable. So, um, so if, I mean, it, it looks fine. I mean, I'm not surprised by these cards being on the ban list just because, like, like I said, we've we've talked about multiple of these before. They're they're repeat offenders. So um, I will say, if Thoughtseize is going to get banned in Modern, it should be banned in Pioneer. I have seen people mentioning that, but if Thoughtseize isn't banned in Modern, it's not getting banned in any format. No, I and mean, Thoughtseize is like, I mean, give me a break. Like, it's Thoughtseize annoying. Is a, it, it's, it's annoying. A, yeah, it's annoying, but it's a very like fair card yeah right? like give me a break we're gonna ban thoughtsies that's just honestly with wilderness man. reclamation banned i wouldn't have been uh, too upset they unbanned nexus of fate sure <laughs> i'd be curious to see because i think the creative deck building coming behind playing a nexus of fate without reclamation is very interesting yeah very interesting to me mm -hmm. um yeah maybe um I mean, we'll see if that ever if that ever like fires is already banned right in pioneer no it's is Fire's banned in Pioneer? I don't think it is. I don't think it no, is. No, maybe it's not banned. Yeah, I think it's alive there still. Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay, don't quote yeah. us on that. Yeah. We, we'd have to actually look that yeah. up. Yeah, like, like I said, I, I know very little about Pioneer. I, I know I Jessica know. and Luca is legal, but I don't yeah. know if it was a Fire's that gun. I don't know. But, like I said, don't quote us on that. We yeah. don't. We we ain't gonna look it up. It's not relevant. If it is illegal, I could actually see that one should be banned. Like, oh yeah, know, that, that might be up next. Yeah. And we might be um, <laughs> just but another repeat offender on the list. Let's go ahead and transition over to a modern. Yeah, uh, modern's an interesting format. This is a format that 
was doing well. Yep. Then they had this this cascade monster come around. But let's talk about some additional, like Euro's being a band there. Yep. Euro is going to be a common denominator here. But there are some other, uh, additional cards. They decided Field of the Dead, you know, Amulet don't need any more uh, help. We, we can take this out and they'll be fine. Mystic Sanctuary being banned is huge. That's nice. That's huge. Cards um, messed up. Biggest issue is because it just... Being fetchable was just so silly. Yeah. Like, that, that card, I... It, they just shouldn't have made those that cycle fetchable, period. If that cycle yeah. wouldn't have been fetchable, it'd be totally fine. But um, that cycle being fetchable was just not not an acceptable thing. So it, it's definitely going to be a good change. It's going to be healthy for modern, for sure. And same with Field of the Dead. Field of the Dead just gave these these land strategies this almost insurmountable late game against um, against controlling kind of strategies and it just it, it was just too much so it, it's good to get rid of that as well and, and not let them have that because the format was really from from what I was seeing and and playing on <clears throat> playing with friends over discord calls on and leagues and stuff it's just uh, there's just so many field decks and just felt like every deck almost that was viable was a field deck and it was again just very monotonous not exciting not interesting not fun um not really something i was interested in, in playing um very often so again I'm, I'm happy they got rid of that um uh the one that's kind of cool to me uh again it's it's not it, it's not even necessarily that interesting because it it was expect. I figured that someday this card would go. I'm happy they got rid of it now. Uh, Simeon Spirit Guide. Simeon yeah. Spirit Guide is a card that I have. Um, I've talked with some some friends. Uh, one that comes to mind is uh, Brandon Dalloway. He and I used to always talk about how Simeon Spirit Guide is right there with Mox Opal and the fact that it's just it's really stupid fast mana and it's it's nothing fair ever comes from Simeon Spirit Guide. You know. No one's ever doing anything anything reasonable with Simeon Spear Guide. They're either like, you know, in your case, turn one triple burning tree goblin bushwhacker on the play against James Johnston and attacking for eleven before he even has a land in play, <laughs> or uh, or you know. I don't see the issue. No, see any problem. Yeah, there. yeah, nothing, nothing wrong with that. But no, I mean, it's it's just fast mana it, that can't be interacted with is usually just really stupid. Um, and it, it's good they just got rid of it. So, I agree with you 100%. Like um, Simeon Spirit Guide, definitely. If Mox Opal isn't acceptable, there's no reason Simeon Spirit Guide. Because no. Simeon Spirit Guide enabled so many things that were so unfair for the modern format, in my Such opinion. stupid crap. They were doing term. legacy things that's modern. Yep. Like, now, don't get me wrong, Ad Nauseam's gone. I don't imagine the nauseam being able to be played now. Yeah, it hurts so much. Ton. Yeah, I, they, yeah, because they you can't, can't lightning storm anymore. Yeah. Like that was their whole purpose. They had to have the the free mana yeah. to be able to pull off the combo. Yeah. Sorry, Odd Nauz. Uh, I'm not sorry. I'm tired of that deck anyway. <laughs> um, now we should get a ribbon for this next card for being the fastest card banned in mo modern that's standard legal. Tabalt's Trickery got yep. banned, and it was only alive for like a little over a week. Yep. It was actually quicker than the Euro, not the Euro ban, but Omnath ban. That's fine. So, Tabalt's Trickery, you did it. And I don't even think it was like super impressive. I think they did it more out of fear. Okay. Based on what you can do with that card, what's expected? All these, the people that are on RD are former players. So they see that and they're like, the potential that this card has, I think we better be better safe than sorry. Yep, nothing wrong Usually with when you can cast free spells out of your library, sends a... Because here's what you do. You have or Ornithopters in your deck. You've got all these zero, good zero drop things. You go Ornithopter, retain priority, to bounce trickery. It. All right, Ulamog. Or what's Yeah. Oh, I'll take another turn. Yes, and please. kill you. Oh, yeah. you don't have no lands. Well, that's <laughs> no cool. permanence for you. That's you're at five. Yeah. How unfortunate. Go. Yeah, yeah. no, I should get rid of it. Definitely. And then, last one is um, Euro. Um, what's your anticipation for the modern format? Any um, cards you would like, would have liked to see banned, would have liked to see unbanned? No, I think this ban is good. Um, some Someday, if, if things, you know, continue to be very land-centric... Maybe Primeval Titan will, will get talked about, but now that now that Field's gone, I, I really think 
those decks are more manageable, hopefully. We'll see what ends up happening. But, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I think, I think uh, again, like, blue-white control is going to be a big beneficiary of this ban. That deck can actually play again because um, it can hang with these with these land decks, I think, um, now that they don't have this, this late-game plan. Stone Blade decks are going to look uh, pretty good again. Yeah, they, got, they actually got a chance. I have seen that um, Heliod is very successful right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Heliod. There's a deck that I that I don't know that well that I talked to Sodic over the week. Ah, yes. Um, and that Dredge is um, probably good. He's even playing that red black enchantment in the sideboard now that when players, if a player was going to gain light, they lose Rain that of much. Gore. Yeah, he's yeah. playing Rain of Gore in the sideboard now for the Heliod matchups. Yeah, funny story about Rain of Gore. There's a guy at my. F and M when I like was playing Burn, he was just so adamant that Burn should always play Reign of Gore. It was really funny. So I, I always know what Reign of Gore is because this guy oh, was just funny. the biggest Reign of Gore enthusiast ever. I always thought he was crazy because it was not very good <laughs> at our shop at all. I would never play that card. But uh, yeah, no, there there are formats where it, where it would be reasonable, and maybe now is one of them. Um, but yeah, so that's just my little excerpt on Reign of Gore. Yeah, but like I was saying now, that's one of the decks that I could see doing quite well because Graveyard hates that minimum. Tron seems like another deck that doesn't have anything it's missing. So Yeah, that deck can come out to play when all the other busted nonsense uh, becomes more reasonable. Boggles is another deck that Especially can... with Odd Nauseam leaving. That's yeah. actually really nice. With Odd Nauseam models. leaving and Burn being very popular right now, I heard Burn and Prowess is doing quite well. Oh, yeah. It is time to get out the Daybreak Cornets when that's going on. Oh, yeah. You better believe. Me it is time to get out the Daybreak Cornets. It is a good day when Burn and Prowess are dominating the format. Judge is... being popular is annoying because yeah. you got to play around shit again. Who knows, is Leliana Veil playable nowadays? That's a huge one. That is, yeah. I mean, the, the thing is, people are always just usually going to play. They're going to play Jund. People just want to play Jund. Well, because it, that's an expensive deck that never yeah. wins. I, <laughs> um, if I owned an expensive deck like that, I'd want to play it as well. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. But no, that definitely is going to be... Um, a duck that's going forward. I could see people. Yeah, it's, I mean, don't get me wrong. John got better with this band. Uh, yes. With this band, uh, it's it's still not what I would play. Uh, no. It's definitely not the best deck, but it, it's playable and it, it got a lot better uh, because also it was not playable before. I also, think, people but. were playing. I know Kalo. I'm sure I believe his last name is Storm. Um, was doing Storm with the new Burgie card. Oh, that's sweet. Um. So that was kind of cool. There's some really some um, very cool opportunities to be played. I feel like they should have unbanned Faithless Looting, but, you know. Maybe someday. Uh, the only reason I wanted <laughs> Faithless Looting, I would have been fine if they they would have found a way to be able to ban uh, unban Faithless Looting with, and still been able to keep Dredge at bay. Because I thought Arclight Phoenix was a sweet deck. I thought Mario Pyromancer was a sweet deck. There was some sweet decks that Looting did enable. Um, Hoggle One was a sweet deck. Those decks were super sweet that I would love to see and have another opportunity to live. If they could have found a way to also um, keep Dredge viable without killing the deck, but making it where it wouldn't be like super busted because of looting. Um, yeah. I don't know what they could have done. I couldn't. I couldn't tell you. Like I'm not even gonna pretend like I know. Um, yeah, you probably have to hit a couple cards. I don't know. I don't know if you'd have to hit a couple. There is a world where you could just say no creeping chill. Definitely no creeping chill. I, that was the first one I like, was thinking too. I think that would probably be enough. It be, might be. Like, it I, might be. Like, I don't think you get hit multiple things without killing the deck. Creep, creeping overall. chill is when it got like really, really strong. Yeah. Just free so, lightning helixes is really nonsense. Yeah. Especially against aggressive strategies, it's just so nice. That's how I won my PTQ. Yeah. Um, playing against burn and yeah. hitting three of them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, overall, I think they did a really good job with the modern ban list. I don't think I have anything on my agenda that I would personally be like, hey, well, this needs to be banned. But I do like what they decided to go with. I wouldn't have expected to bolt trickery personally, but I understand the reasoning, as I mentioned previously. Yep. Um, now we transition over to the legacy format. Um, as Arkham's Astrolabe was finally banned, which I know a lot of people were hoping to be banned. Now the Snowkill deck is no longer a thing. Yep. 
Um, you know, if that right shaman isn't legal, I don't understand why um, Astrolabe is legal. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. Astrolabe is a stupid card, too. Exactly. We've talked about this before as well. Just another repeat offender. Yep. It enabled so it. many nasty things. Like, yeah. don't get me wrong, it was um, nasty because it was in conjunction with the next card. We'll just go skip down to this last card um, because it's relevant to the decks it was played in, and that's Oko Thief of Crowns. Deuces, Oko. We're tired of you. Everybody's tired of you. You could join Euro and burn in hell. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, again, I mean, just repeat offender. We just keep having more. I mean, any of these cards are just not. They weren't good. They were mistakes. It's totally fine to just be like, enough's enough. Yep. They're not fun. They're, yeah. they're just not. They're, they're really stupid cards. Um, yeah. That, that's, that's about. That's all, pretty much all I have to say about Oko. <laughs> yeah, they just don't do anything beneficial for the format, and I think there's something that we just need to rid ourselves of before before we lose our minds. Yep. And then the last car, which was a shocker, because I honestly didn't think it was going to happen, but we talked about it last week, and that's Dreadhorde Arcanus. Yep. I said they they need to ban something from Team or Delver because Delver's been running rampant, blue red Delver Team or Delver whatever. Yep. Been running rampant for like a year now, maybe more, like at least yeah. during the whole pandemic. Yeah, and it's been it's kind of annoying when you want it when you play Delver every single round. Yeah, and they were like, Hey, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna say no Arcanus. Well, They're saying we're gonna ban it. This is a good ban. I it's, like this ban. Yeah, I do. I, I do, like but I'm a little biased. It'll, it'll hopefully, we'll hopefully we'll diversify the format a little bit. Um, cards like Brainstorm and Ponder, you don't need to free cast those cards exactly two drops screw that those cards are already absurdly good you don't need free free more copies again just yeah i think i think it's a smart band um and i really hope it will uh, make legacy a little more interesting which is you know what you were talking about last week it, mm -hmm. delver's been like the best act yeah i'd like the a, best i want for, like, diverse years, formats four years yeah it's i mean diversity makes formats more fun and interesting and i think generally Magic players in, enjoy some amount of diversity, um, mm -hmm. and when when you just play the same stuff all the time every round, it, it's it's not good. It's bad. It's bad. It's unhealthy, and that's not what wizards um, should be trying to promote. And in addition to that, there is no excuse for a large format such as Legacy, Modern, Pioneer to ever have a undiverse format. Yeah, there's no excuse for it. Um, you have a, so many cards at your disposal to make so many cool, creative decks if you want, or just uh, even if they're just like the top tier decks. Let's say the format is like Elves, uh, Storm. There's Delver, and I don't know what's some other decks. I can't think. Um, Eldrazi. We'll just say those five decks, and you'd be like, all right, each of them have like ten percent, ten to fifteen percent of the meta. That's a fine format. Yeah. Then you still got the little mixture of the other tier two yeah. and beyond decks. Yeah. That's a healthy format. Yep. Of course, you're gonna have decks that are better than others. That's the nature of the game. Yeah, yeah. But that's how magic works. I, I like magic when it's um a pairing lottery. How how much value is in the in the lottery? For example, if you go to buy a ticket, you're like, oh, I won the lottery. So did two million other people. So each of you make twenty five bucks. Is that really a lottery anymore, or is that like, oh, I didn't really do anything. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna get kind of bored doing this. Mm -hmm. Like, that's why they need to fix it, and I think this might help. Yeah, th this will, this will definitely help. I, I, I think I, I, gen I, I like these bands. I think they're good, and I think overall it, it's going to be healthy, and it's going to uh, generate more interest in these formats. Players will want to play them more. The average player will, maybe not everyone, but the, I think the average player is, is going to benefit from these bands. And, you know, I, I, I've seen a lot of, uh, there's been a lot of excitement, it seems like, on Twitter about these bands. I know Zach Allen's been going wild about getting to play uh, various modern decks again that he hasn't gotten to play in forever. And, you know, the format was super stale for him, and now it's not anymore. And I'm I'm sure that he's not the only person that feels that way. So, you know, I, I think it's good. And and that's, you know, it, it's exciting when when people are excited to play Magic. That, that's good. That's that's what we want. So, yeah, I no. think this was very positive. I agree. The only thing with Legacy I do think that they need, they could have done, they could have fixed, is they could unban Lurus. I agree. 
um, because they uh, the last one is Loris was on Band and Vintage. I don't think Loris is that big of an issue now that they did have the rule change. Yeah. Um, if it's allowed in Vintage, I don't see any reason why they can't allow I agree, it in Legacy. I agree with that 100%. Um, I there's no I reason. I No, I, I don't think... There's any reason to and ban, and you can always put it back on the yeah. Ban you can list. always reban it if it if it ends up being a problem, get rid of it again. And but the, you know. with the new companion rule, we need to give it a chance. Yeah. Give I it agree. an opportunity. I agree with that. Yeah. Um, let's see if it's that bad. Legacy has options. I feel like there's ways that we can stop it. Yeah. Like, give us the opportunity. Yeah, I think now, what the biggest risk of be storm that yeah. might be the yeah. know, deck where it would be the most dangerous. And if it ends up being busted there, whatever, then just ban it again. But yeah, I exactly. think with the you're, you're correct that that we should probably give it a shot. Yep. Um. Overall, I don't have any opinion on vintage. Like, I don't know anything. <laughs> Same. About, yeah. I know Same. nothing yeah. about vintage. Yeah, yeah. Um. But regardless to the other stuff, I think I don't have much else. But I did mention we didn't mention about the pioneer. Another reason that the fury being banned. Is huge is because one of the top decks being played was Niv Delight that does creep the power level of Niv Niv down because them being able to stop you from interacting with what they're doing because being able to cast Niv without any any counters anything to stop you from doing and it on just, your it, turn on your end step if they plus to fairy and then brought the light on your turn yeah so dumb insane yeah really dumb and also in the mirror matches it's annoying have you ever seen the Teferi to fairy action of that deck. Makes yeah. you want to shoot. Really yourself. crappy, just bad, just just garbage magic, honestly. And again, you know, we we've talked. I'm I'm not gonna say much more about Teferi. Everyone probably knows my opinion on Teferi by now. Yeah, you know, for the twenty times I've talked about it on this pod in the prior episodes of this podcast. But yeah, I mean, it's a good band. It's a good band. That's that's all I really have to say. Yep. Well, um, if you had to give it, let's say, a up to ten rating. What would you rate this band list? Right now, I think I'd give it a 10. I'm, I'm really happy. I agree. With this. I was on the fence about 10. It would have been a, it would have been 100 out of 10 if they unbanned looting, but I'm a little biased. <laughs> um. Yeah. But no, yeah, this is this is a 10 for me. I mean, they, they went into every format, and they said, we're going to try and make this better, and that should be what they do all the time. And that's what they did early on in Pioneer's existence that I really liked is they – were very aggressive and went in and looked at the format and tried to keep it under control. And they need to keep doing that to generate player interest, especially like during the pandemic when, you know, some people are probably losing a little bit of interest in the game because they don't enjoy the online component as much as in paper. You've got to keep people interested in the game and wanting to play. And good banning is definitely going to help. Yup, and... The way you get people interested is having a good meta game. Yep. That's where standard comes in. They have been killing it the last ever since their last band. They've been like top notch in formats. So they've had good diverse formats. Currently, like I did an event early uh, yesterday, and I took a snapshot of what the meta game was, and I posted it online. I've sent it to you. The meta game was mono red had seventeen percent of the field with thirty one decks. 24 decks being mono white aggro, which was 13, almost 14%. Then Soltai had 11% with 20 copies. Gruel Adventures, 18 copies. Demir Rogues, 12 copies. Esper Doom for 12 copies. That's a healthy format right That's there. That's nice, yeah. That is, like... Good. What else can you ask for? Like, Yeah, not much. Like That's what you want in a format. And all these decks are beatable. Mono Red, they can lose. They, I heard that their actual mono white matchup's not great. Um, Mono White plays that cyborg card that makes them pay mana for every creature that attacks. That's that, kind of hard to kill. That is, that's not great for them. Yeah. Um, Mono White, if you build Soul Tide correctly, you can beat Mono White. By the way, like I've been proving that. Like I've been playing a different build, obviously, um, but it's winnable. But Mono White also can beat Soul Tide because I've also lost to it. Yeah. Um, Gruel Adventures, I think, is the worst side of the aggro decks, but it still can win. Yeah. It's still a playable deck. It had yeah. the worst win percentage last week. It was like two of the decks with the worst win percentage. Yeah. Them and Rogues. One thing we have to consider about Gruel too is there some people are playing different builds than others, which may impact it a little bit. Like True. We, I know uh, we both kinda liked Kyle Bogamus's list from last week. Yeah. And he liked it too. He wrote a pretty pretty good article that I was reading yeah. this week. Um, he talked about why Goldspan Dragon is actually a bad add to that deck and you probably shouldn't be playing it, which 
which makes sense. Um, it's a lot of mana. It's bro. a lot of mana, and the deck like the deck doesn't need more big clunkers. It needs and, and another problem too is like the deck doesn't use the treasures all that well. The only way you use your treasures is the shatter skull smashing, which is like whatever. That's mm. not that's not very exciting. Yeah, and when you're stuck realistic. not having your mana sources and you're holding a five drop that you can't cast in your hand, what are you doing? Yeah, exactly. Like, or like yeah, you that's know, the, one less resource that you can use. That that might be the the, the decision maker. And then you put five mana. You're going up against Soul Tie. You're turning on their disruption even more. You like disruption is supposed to be a bad card against you. You're making that card good. Yeah. Don't do that. Um, the Mirror Rogues. I think that's one of the worst decks to play right now, only because it's going to get Soul Tie. Yeah. But if I'm going to go and play a deck and I'm like, okay, 17% of the field's going to be mono red, 13% is going to be against mono white, and then 10 more percent scroll, right? And then you can, you have all those percents. Those are all the aggro decks in the format. I'm trying to hit 11% of the field, but ignore all that percentage being yeah. aggro, which I'm probably not going to beat. I certainly don't get the way the way the decks are constructed right now. That's for sure. Because they, they aren't even like trying to get better against these aggro decks either. Yeah, which is I, insane. I've read, I, you know, Martin Yuzo, I think it was, was talking about how, um, and I was mentioning it in my like write-up uh, after I did poorly last week with Rogues, is that uh, the deck can like sideboard. I mean, you could play Deadweight in your Luris deck. That'd be like really good against all these aggro decks and getting to recur it with Luris. Uh, you mm -hmm. get to play Crippling Fear in your sideboard and your one creature type deck. So it's going to be a one, a one sided yeah. wrap. You know, you have a lot of good options and people are still just playing three to four Skyclave Shades in their sideboard, which doesn't make, I didn't bring that card in against anything. I, yeah, didn't I think want that card, it. it's good against Soul Tie. It can I, be. I don't even know that it is anymore because of Extinction Event plus Shadow's Verdict. It doesn't even survive any of their sweepers. Yeah, that's true. I was really unimpressed. Like, it's really I'm bad not, against Shadow's. Yeah, it's so bad against Shadow's Verdict. So I, I think the deck needs to move away from But that I do think that's the reason. It also might have been good because they were expecting Blue Red Temple. Yeah. Um, no, don't get me wrong. I get, I get it was good for a time, but I think right now that card is nonsense in the sideboard. Play something that, else. Get better against the aggro Out of all the top decks I just listed, do you know this is a deck that ain't on there? Uh, is it? Oh, yeah. Is it good? It is not. <laughs> oh. Is it good? It is not. Oh. Yeah, no kidding. That deck was overhyped. People were expecting saying how it was the best deck, and we see how that worked out for him. Yeah, we knew that. I think yeah, it was. We, we knew that wasn't the case right away. We were yeah. pretty, pretty confident that that was not going to be the best deck. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, it, here we are. It is not. And I know in probably less than twenty four hours from now, or twelve hours from now, I should say, I'm going to be playing a <laughs> nice little is it deck. No, it is a deck, but playing in the SCG, we're talking about is it. There's no way in hell I would waste my time. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm playing Sultai Ultimatum. Yeah. Um. For those that don't know, I, I played my build a little different. I took Todd Anderson's current um, updated list that he posted, and I took the Gargaros and I th and an extra Eliminate and threw him in the main deck. Um, I cut the Wolf Havens because I don't think that card is particularly good. It's a horrible late top deck. I already have to deal with Cultivates as a late top deck. I don't want those. And Gargaros is good in the mirror, too. I've won mirror matches because of that card alone. I also get to grab it off Ultimatum. Mm -hmm. I've grabbed it off Ultimatum a few times. Um, against uh, aggro, sometimes you need to grab that to win. Yep. Um, and I said, because that percentage, right, this is just one tournament, but a lot of the tournaments are similar to this. Where aggro is going to come, based on numbers, it's going to be more of a percentage than Soul Tide is going to be. Especially right now, obviously. Um, so, if, for example, let's say, we'll just say 30% of the field is going to be aggro, and 15% of the field is going to be Soul Tide. Even if it was like, let's say we take this right here, right? This is about like 40%, 50% right here. If we combine those three. And let's say 40% is aggro because you got three different aggro decks. Yeah, ro and rogues counts too. Yeah, we'll count those. Um, you got 40% of the field is going to be a hard matchup compared to Soul Tie. Which is like 20% of them. We'll just give them a 20%. We'll give them a little edge. Yeah, we'll loop them. We'll combine them with Esper Doom. Because yeah. that's fair. I mean, let's those let's say those decks. 20%. I'm going to want to be more geared towards the higher percentage. Yeah, obviously. And hopefully win game two and three against the other ones. Yep. That's just, I mean, that's, yeah, that's common sense. That's yep. what it is, really. Unfortunately, a lot of people aren't following that common yeah. sense a lot, right I now. mean, yeah, a lot of Based people. on the list I've been seeing. Yeah. Now, there was a cool list that I beat the Siltide deck today. But he was playing a demon. 
It's a six drop demon that lets you search your deck for two cards with different names that isn't named that demon. Your opponent chooses one that you get to keep and you put the and you put the other one on the bottom of your library. So my opponent when he's like, I grab ultimatum in the gate, which I was like, that was kinda cool. So I obviously said you don't get ultimatum. And I had to play around in the gate, obviously, which was a little pain in my tail. But I was able to win. But the card was cool because it's also a mono black card. It's another card that you grab you ultimatum. ultimatum. So, so you, you ultimatum. Can keep ultimatum in. Yeah. yeah. So the card cool. was cool. Yeah. Because you'd be like, all right, I grab ultimatum in the extra turn card. Which one do I get? Like. I know I heard some people were like playing Massacre Worm too. I actually like that a lot. Yo, that makes a lot of uh, sense. We have a friend that was against the Massacre Worm, but after I was here, when I heard it, I was like, yo, it I seems, wasn't I thinking seems, about that. It seems I'm awesome like, to like, me. <laughs> it, like, killed, it kills so pretty much everything. In the mirror, right? Your opponent took an extra turn. You get to play Massacre Worm, and they lose two creatures. You just dealt them four, you gained four, and you have a big worm. Like, yeah. I, I don't hate it. Like, I don't I, hate it either. Like, um, it seems pretty reasonable. Certainly as like a sideboard card, Yeah, if, if nothing else. In the in the aggro matchups, yeah, it's really good. So much better than Vorinclex against the aggro decks. It's not even yes. close. Um, I do keep Vorinclex in the game. Yeah, you though. do. I mean, yeah. you do. Because uh, <laughs> you actually want to be able to cure, but to see God, like, go to the second chapter and lock him down. My favorite thing to do is gain those two. Then you play Yorion and keep doing it over and over again. Yeah. I did that against um, Gruul. Gruel Adventures, and I just never let them do their thing. Yeah. But yeah, overall, I'm going to be playing Soul Tide tomorrow. Tomorrow, Sunday. This will be coming out on Monday, so obviously my Twitter will always say, already say how I did. We're probably going to go. We're, we got one buy, so one three drop. Uh -oh. It's all good. And we got the Elimination Chamber tomorrow night. Are you excited? Yep. You, yep that'll be you're fun. a big Edge wrestling fan? For those that, yeah. Oh, people go lo learn to love some wrestling. We're going to be starting a wrestling podcast soon. Mm -hmm. um, who knows? We might even get that start that tonight. You never know these days. Um, but I just know we got some more content coming as well. Yep. I know these haven't been the longest podcasts that we have done previously, but and that's okay. You know, it's it's not about the length; it's about the quality of the product. Like I don't want to like ramble on the same topic like an yep. extended just time. We're gonna have more guests on the show. We're working on getting the guests lined up and everything. With everything going on, you know, we're still in a pandemic. People have work schedules. But regardless, we're going to have magic content when you do. Yep. We're going to make sure we talk magic. Whether that means Steven don't sleep, that's fine. We're willing to take that sacrifice for the team. Yeah. His sleep schedule is not my concern. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, so I think that's pretty much about but, all we've got today. But um, for main... wrestling fans that um, do listen to the podcast, because there are some, who do you think's winning the <laughs> Raw Chamber match? Um, who's in it? Drew McIntyre. Jeff yeah, he'll, Hardy. He'll win. McIntyre will win. Oh, yeah. Minutes. He's kicking out of all the finishers. Yeah. I, um, I it's 100%. I hope, I hope he doesn't. McIntyre is going to pin Sheamus. It's going to be Sheamus McIntyre at Mania. That makes sense. Um, yeah. Sheamus what, beat McIntyre on Raw to get the last spot to come out last. I expect um, Sheamus to um, <laughs> lose to McIntyre. By, I, expect them, I, I expect him to roll Sheamus up. And Sheamus be like, you got me off guard. I It wasn't... You can't actually beat me straight up, yada yada. Yeah, yeah. Um, then the SmackDown one, the winner of the chamber faces Roman Reigns. Um, Seth Rollins returned and attacks Cesaro. Right? You know who Cesaro is, yep, right? Yep, yep, He does the swing. Does yep. a very impressive swing, by the way. That's some stamina. Yep. But um, I'm predicting that he wins. Here's why. He's going to face Roman Reigns. Seth Rollins is going to cost him the match against Roman Reigns. To cost in the championship. Okay. Um, that's going to set up their feud to go into Mania. Ed spears Roman Reigns at the end of the night. Since Roman speared him, and then he's like, I choose you. That'd be a, yeah, that'd be a good way to have it. You're out your mind if you think Edge ain't going to be at the Elimination Chamber. When he's got to choose his opponent, Yeah. I expect that Edge ends the night. He's going to do his ultimate opportunist moment by spearing Roman Reigns and be like, I choose you. He might even grab his title and hold it up in the air, you know. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. But regardless, I I'm 100 willing to put any amount of money on the line that is Edge Roman Reigns. Yep. But that's our wrestling preview. We'll know that more tomorrow, and everybody come Monday will know that's all done. But next week, um, well, we should have an interesting show. We're gonna be talking about the arena open. If um, how Stephen did in his poll. How we think the arena open going forward. 
we're going to talk about the SCG event that I did. And then we will have a guest on next week. I don't know who the guest will be, but we're going to guarantee to have a guest on next week that we're going to do an interview in, in depth on how's, how this player got into Magic, their success in Magic, all that good stuff. Just a nice little two-on-one interview. Talking Swish, going to bring someone on. It might be Dewey, could be Nate. Could be a lot of people. You probably it, avoid James for talking about success stories. Oh, you're right. James, James is success. Uh, no. no not you're going to hear happen. a lot of classic stories. Oh, yeah. When we, when we get him back on the show one day, he's been avoiding us for some reason. He was such a liar when he said he was going to be coming over. Yeah, I know. <laughs> what a douche. Oh, yeah. James Johnson, you suck. But we're, we are out of time. This has been Larry, along with Steven. Talk and swish. We will catch you later. See you next time.